Hello, good morning. Welcome once again to Harvest Fire Conference and French Oil Convention. I'm excited to be with you again once again. Happy birthday to my pastors, Reverend Victor and Jumoke Adeyemi and the entire Global Harvest Church. 25 years, no be being so. Eh? It's been a great one and God's been faithful and we are grateful. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. Were you blessed by that message? It is me because I am anointed. I want you to get that message and give it to everybody around you. Let them hear it. It is because I am anointed. You need to hear it over and over yourself because the Bible made us to realize that faith coming by hearing and hearing. Faith does not come from having heard. It comes from you hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith coming by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I'm excited to be with you this morning. This morning, I want to talk on the topic fresh oil for a fresh start. Fresh oil for a fresh start. Psalm 92 verse 10. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I love that. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Many a times in a journey as Christians, as believers, as ministers, as believers doing exploits, we might need to restart. Let me say this, for example, if you know anything about the computer language, when your computer starts to make malfunction, Sometimes it's because it has a virus. Yeah, virus. And when your computer has a virus, they will tell you there are only two things you can do. You can remove the system altogether or you restart it. In fact, they will normally advise you that before you remove, you restart. So you restart before you remove when your system has a virus. But now, this year 2020 has a virus. Oh, yes. This year 2020 has a virus. The name of the virus is is COVID-19, Corona virus of 2019. So it's a virus. So what do we do? Do we remove 2020? We can't remove 2020, but we can restart it. You see, many a times, God gives us an opportunity to restart. I was telling them in my own, our own organizations, that it's unfortunate that some people during the lockdown, what they did was that when they said there's a lockdown, they stopped. Then when they said you can open, they reopen. No, don't reopen, restart. Can I say that again? Don't just reopen, restart. It's an opportunity for you to restart whatever you've been doing. The difference between reopen and restart is why. If you reopen, you just go back to the way things are being done. And the world has changed. The world has moved. You see, there are things that happen in the world that divide the world into two like the coming of Jesus. Unfortunately, COVID-19 had come to be like that. It's become 2020 BC, 2020 AC. You know what I mean? When people are talking now and they say, well, the other time when I was in party, people were asking, is that BC or AC? Before Corona BC or after Corona AC? So 2020 got divided into BC and AC before Corona and after Corona. So the question is, are you aware that the world had even changed? So don't just reopen that your restaurant, don't just reopen that your business, don't just reopen that your church, restart. If you're going to restart, there are three things that are very, very pertinent. Number one, you have some things you need to stop doing. So look at yourself, look at your organization, look at your business, look at your ministry and say, what are the things I need to stop doing? Maybe I've been doing it this way before. I need to stop that and do it this way now. Maybe that's the way we have been going before. We need to stop doing these things. Look, before you reopen, if you're going to restart, you start from there. What do I need to stop doing? Even me, I'm going to be telling you later on, some things I used to do one way, I don't do them like that again. And I don't do them like that again again basically because it's important for you and i to know that in this dispensation we have come to a time of restarting so what do i need to stop doing number two what do i need to start doing maybe there are things you weren't doing before you need to start to do now the difference between restart and reopen number one you ask yourself what do i need to stop doing number two what are the things i need to start doing number three how do i maintain relevance so in 20 2020 AC after Corona, 
What do you need to stop doing? What do you need to start doing? How do you maintain relevance? So remember the old adage that for you to keep on doing the same thing and expect a new result is the new definition of madness. Let me say that again. For you to keep on doing the same thing and expect a different result is the new definition of madness. So madness is you kept on doing the same thing and you expect things to be different and things will have to be different. They call it the new normal. I love to say that I don't want it to be the new normal, though. Whether we like it or not, it's new and it's becoming a normalcy. So you need to make up your mind about those things. So, but this is what I've kept on telling people. We are Christians. No matter what, even during the lockdown, I was telling my guys, we need to keep on preaching the gospel. Colossians 4.17 says, try to pause, that it take it to the ministry which has received of the Lord. No matter the platform you have, your business, your school, all of that is platforms for ministry. We are all the ministry. First Peter 4 10 is all of us have received a gift through that gift to minister. So your gift as a doctor, your gift as a sportsman, your gift as a businessman is part of ministry. You are either an apostle in church or an apostle to the marketplace. What apostolos means a sent one. We are all sent. You are sent. I am sent. Look at somebody close to you and say you are sent. Yeah, let them be shocked and bewildered, but say to them again you are sent. Let them be marooned and Flop and cast it, but said to them again, You are sent, you are sent. Christians for 17, I'll say, fulfill that ministry. You know, I saw Philippians 1 12, Paul saying in Philippians 1 12 that the gospel cannot be quarantined. Yes, he said that. He said in Philippians 1 12, he said, But who you should understand, brethren, that the things that happen unto me are falling out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. That is to say, the things that happen, if I made the gospel went go further, the devil made a mistake with COVID. COVID-19, he thought he can stop the preaching of the gospel with the lockdown, but then churches were locked, but the gospel can be locked. The message translation of Philippians 1.12 said, I want to report to you, friends, that my imprisonment that has, has had the opposite effect of his intended, the opposite of his intended effect, instead of being squashed, the message actually prospered. How many of you sense that during the lockdown, that I need to report to you, friends, that the lockdown has had the opposite of its intended effect. Instead of being squashed, the message actually prospered. Our cathedral, let me give an example. Our cathedral, for example, if we pack people back to back like Sandin, we fill every space. We could accommodate 3,000 people back to back like Sandin. We pack everybody. The first floor, this, the, this middle floor, the gallery, we can accommodate 3,000 people. But online, my Easter Sunday, the message we had 9,000 people watching that is three times the capacity of our cathedral and then our cathedral everybody we have to be in one space but our online Easter program there were people from across the continent from across the countries across generations some of them I will never meet in person that were blessed by our Easter convention that is the opposite of what the devil meant amplified version put it like this that Philippians 1 12 he said now I want you to know and continue Continue to rest assured, brethren, that what has happened to me, this lockdown, this imprisonment, has actually only served to advance and give a renewed impetus to the spreading of the good news, the gospel. Have you noticed that about this lockdown, that there is a new impetus to the preaching of the gospel? All of a sudden, we're looking for new means to preach the gospel, new means to do business, new means to establish the kingdom, new means to make our organization stand stronger. The devil loves so he was to tell the verse of the Paul now say so that in my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and all the other places that is to say this lockdown made the gospel to be preached in palaces and places that would have been preached before with this lockdown through Instagram through Facebook through Zoom we've taken the gospels to places that was difficult for them to go before we've reached people we've touched lives in ways that was difficult before so I'm trying to say to you that this season is a good season. In 2 Timothy 2.9, 2 Timothy 2.9, look at what Paul said. Paul said, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bounds, but the word of God is not bound. I'm trying to say to you that no matter the season, no matter the situation, the word of God cannot be locked down. The word of God is not bound. The central English version, put that 2 Timothy 
two nights like this. He said, because of this message, they lock me up. It's a lockdown. And they treated me like a criminal. But God's good news is not locked in jail. So the gospel cannot be locked down. And I want you to put that at the back of your mind as a minister of the gospel. And like I kept on saying, we are all ministers of the gospel. Your expression might not be in church. Your expression might be in the school that you run, the class that you teach, in the business that you do. But just know that no matter what, the gospel cannot be locked down. Um, so the question people have been asking me from all over the world is, Reverend, what do we do in this season? You know, in First Chronicles 12:32, the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. The Bible said they were just 200 men, but that generation was at their command. How? He said because they understand the times and season and what Israel ought to do. Many a times when people quote that scripture, all they talk about is the times and season. They don't talk about what Israel ought to do. What I want to do in this session is to help you to know what you ought to do. So now it's a strange time. How do I do business? How do I run my organization? How do I run my ministry? How do I move forward so there's a fresh oil for a fresh start? Yes. So I've received this oil. You remember where we stopped when I was preaching? It's because you're anointed. Is that in that second Samuel chapter 10 and verse 7, first Samuel chapter 10 verse 7, I love the way he ended. He said, do as the occasion serve you now that you have the fresh oil. So now that I have the fresh oil for a fresh restart, what do I do? with it. My friend, Dr. K said to me in one of our discussions said, two things people are doing wrong right now. Some are worrying and some are waiting. And those are waste of time. Don't worry, don't wait. Don't worry, don't wait. Somebody repeat after me, say, I will not worry. I will not wait. I will not worry. I will not wait. Why? Because um, if you worry, it does not change anything. It makes it worse. You know, so this is time to act. How do I know exactly what to do? What I'm trying to do is to give you direction. One of the things direction does is that it enhances productivity. It enhances productivity. A lot of people are laboring. But when you labor with that direction, you labor in vain. Isaiah 65 verse 23. Isaiah 65 23. One of those scary scriptures. He said, you will not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble. That is the way the message translation brings that out. He said, do who work and have nothing come out of it? One of the problems now, if you're not careful, if you don't understand this season, this time, if you don't understand to appropriate your fresh oil for fresh start, you will labor and have nothing to show for it because time is changing and time flies. And I know time flies, but you have to be the pilot. I put a picture on my Instagram that has gone viral. My son just 10 years ago at the age of 3 plus with his mom and my son now at the age of 13 with his mom. See the picture. I hope we'll be able to show it to you right now. Look at the difference. Look at my son 3 plus with his mom. Look at my son now 13 plus with his mom. Time changes. But this is the thing. You can be the pilot. You see the future is not a place we're going to. That's a mistake we make. We've been taught we're going into the future. We're going to the future. No. The future is not a place we're going to. The future is a place we create. You create the future. You don't go into the future. You create the future. John Maxwell said, but if you don't create the future you want, you have to endure the future you get. If you don't create the future you want, you have to endure the future you get. So today, I want to teach you how to create that future. I want to teach you how to operate with a fresh oil, with a fresh start in this season. A lot of people are confused, and I know that I've received calls from North America, from Asia, from Europe, everywhere. People are in the same pandemonium in this pandemic. They say, what do we do? But thank God for the fresh oil. But the fresh oil is to give us a fresh start and to give us an opportunity to understand where to go. And one of the things I say to people is use the Zacchaeus model. Zacchaeus model is the best model for this season. Luke chapter 19 verse 1. Let me show you the Zacchaeus model. The Bible number but one thing about Zacchaeus is passing. Notice this. Write it down if you're writing. Passing, passing. Look at you. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Passing. Seasons come, seasons go. No season is permanent. Look at this. Jesus is passing by. When Jesus is passing, there are some things you need to do. There are some things you need to lay hold, hold, hold on. If you miss the season, you've missed everything. There are seasons in life. Seasons are not to be missed. You need to understand this is a good season for you to do things. Zacchaeus perceived that this is a passing moment. This moment is not forever. So what do I do in this moment? He perceives so things are passing, things are 
change it. Things are not like they used to be. And I want you to know that. I want you to recognize that. I want you to put that at the back of your spirit. So the number one thing about the Zacchaeus model is passing time is person. Number two, Perus. Oh my God, I love this Perus. Look at verse two. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. He was rich. Then verse three said, he sought to see Jesus, but could not because of the crowd, for he was short of stature. Listen to this. You need to peruse. One of the things you do in this is you know that it's passing. You know things are changing, but sit down and peruse. Somebody say peruse. I didn't hear you say peruse. Shout it. Say Perus, Perus, Perus. What do I mean by Perus? Meditate. Sit down and think. Look at this guy. The Bible said he was rich in materials but short in stature. You need to Perus. Where am I rich? Where am I short? You know what I've discovered? We are not all rich the same way. We are not all short in the same way. This world is no balance at all. Did anybody, my generation, know what I'm talking about? This world, no balance. You know, some people are rich in some things. Some are short in some things. I remember when I was starting my, my, my ministry office, I drove, I went into the the office a friend of mine drove me with another friend when we were there the first friend said Femi what are you doing here I said I'm starting my ministry then I asked him because he's called like I'm called I said when are you starting he said well I don't have a laptop yet he has a car he said but I don't have a laptop yet when I get my laptop I will start I turned to the other one you I have a laptop when are you starting then I said you know I don't have a car now when I have a car we start Look at me that they are talking to. I don't have a laptop of anything, but yet look at me starting. No car, no laptop, but I'm starting. I'm saying to you, Peruse, because I knew I might be short in materials, but I'm not short in the anointing. I might be short in car, short in, in, in laptop, but I'm not short in wisdom. I'm saying to you, look at yourself. Where are you short and where are you rich? There is nobody that is not short somewhere. I knew how we started Global West Church. 25 years ago, we weren't in reach in auditorium, we weren't in reach in all the equipment we used to rent, but we started all the same. Peruse, not only do you understand the passing season, you need to peruse and know where you are short and you need to know where you are rich. Number three, pursue. So you run ahead. You need to pursue what you want to take. You need to pursue your position. You need to pursue where you want to be. Look at this. Not only did you recognize the passing of Jesus, that this season will not be forever. We need to seize the moment. He perused, he looked at himself. Where am I rich? Where am I short? What do I do where I'm short to match up to where I'm rich? What do I do to maintain where I'm rich? Then he but the Bible said he pursue, he run ahead. You need to run ahead. If you're going to lead this season, you need to run ahead, everybody. Hi, Lord, your Max just said, your Max just said, if you see the bandwagon, you are too late. You can't lead the bandwagon. You've got to run ahead. You've got to pursue before other people realize. Number four, position. The Bible said he climb up onto a sycamore tree to say, some of you might need to climb a tree of mentoring. It might be a tree of prayer and fasting. It might be a tree of positioning yourself well maybe a tree of social media which tree are you going to climb you've got to climb a tree that is a place you've got to climb to be able to get what god wants you to do so number one that is a passing season number two peruse and look at it what do i have what do i lack we are my rich we are my short then after that you need to pursue and go ahead and listen to number four you need to position yourself so he positioned himself he climbed be Sakamotri, you know one of the things I've discovered is that where you are determines what you see and where you position yourself determines who sees you positioning is everything he climbed a tree Jesus he was the shortest man in the Bible but the only man Jesus lift up his eyes to look at is that not exciting that it was in his weakness that he found strength have discovered that oh, there is no uh, no no excuse for you there is nothing you lack that can't work look at this guy he was shot but yet he positioned himself right jesus had to look up to see him so i'm saying that we need to use the zacchaeus model number one passing time is passing you need to seize the moment number two is the fact that you need to peruse and look at where you are number three you need to pursue and then run ahead of your generation run ahead of your mate there are some things i was led of god to do ahead before this pandemic like i'll be telling you number four position yourself climb the 
sacramo tree there is an advantage in every disadvantage you cannot write the word disadvantage and not put advantage into it his shortness made jesus to look up to him oh there is a fortune in every misfortune you need to position yourself number five predict it was going to pass that way he knew it was going to pass that way he was able to predict where jesus will pass let me say that again there is an advantage in every disadvantage there is a fortune in every disfortune he was a short man he was a tax collector collecting tax from his people for the roman government they hated him but you know nobody wants to pay tax and he was short he didn't have long leg but then he must have learned to predict people this guy is escaping from me where will he take so we go ahead to block him that is what he used to do where he was a tax collector he never knew one day in destiny he will need the same key to move forward imagine he was able to predict where jesus will go are you predicting this move are you predicting where this nation is going are you predicting where this generation is going some of the things i'm going to say to you now is to predict to help you to pre to pre pursue to position to predict and finally number six to prepare jesus look at him and said zacchaeus make haste come down for today i will eat in your house so go and prepare you need to prepare some of the things i'm going to say to you today we help you with this fresh oil to do as occasion serve you to do as occasion serve you it will help you to understand the passing moment to understand how to peruse on what you have and what you need to have to help you to pursue to position to predict then to prepare yourself for what is coming preparation is key little preparation little performance every preparation every performance big preparation is big performance are you prepared for what god is doing through you you've got to prepare i have planted several churches by myself i've planted four i planted under the staircase in in la la then from there i moved that church to 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 ring road to have a shopping complex we were there for a while then i left us to dunami so there i moved to Ijokodo junction and started again the second time then some time ago i left that one and i went to nashville tennessee i started the church that's the third one then at nashville tennessee i came back home and then we bought the land to build cathedral then i took 10, 20 people and a canopy local canopy and planted another one 2014 that is where the cathedral is now then this year i came to um, toronto canada and planted the neutral this is for fifth time i love to plant but you see with each planting there is a new preparation the first service we had in toronto we had 33 people in attendance the time i was in nashville seven weeks i was there we were able to grow a church of about 30 people with about five six different nationals only two nights three Nigeria, or four Nigerians in midst or something like that. I'm trying to say to you, you need to prepare. Then look at what we have on the result and if ever seven, the Bible said, everybody now start to protest. They all complain saying he has gone to be a guest with man that is a sinner. That is what we happen. If you get all this right, this is how you know you've done it well. People will start to protest. They will start to talk about you. If they are not talking about you, you are not making a move. Am I talking to somebody? But this is what you need to know if you mind the position you will lose your position don't mind them they will protest but they are protesting because they didn't do what they need to do they didn't understand number one the passing of the movement they don't know that things are changing number two they didn't peruse to know where am i rich where am i short number three they didn't pursue when they are meant to pursue so that they can run ahead look 19 verse 4 number four they didn't position themselves where they're meant to position number five they didn't predict where the move is going what to do in the organization in their ministry in academics in education number six they didn't prepare jesus said go and prepare number seven then there will be protests but when the protests come don't mind the position focus 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 so having said that let me move into this and explain to you this season i'll be talking in two ways i'll be talking to people that are doing secular work interestingly before this pandemic i did a series in a church Sunday business school called the future of work the future of work 
It was as if he was prophetic. I'm going to be sharing some of it with you. When I was done, the people came to me and said, okay, Reverend, please teach us the future of ministry. Then I did the future of ministry. I'll be talking about both very quickly. And my time is running. But there are three things triumphant people are doing this time. Number one, they relax. Let me tell you, never calm down. Tell you, never calm down like this now. If you're watching me, type it, type, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. You know, the, 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 <laughs> the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God, James said. The wrath of man will work the righteousness of God. Calm down. So number one, relax. I, my favorite scripture of late is Psalm 116 verse 7. Psalm 116 verse 7 said, I said to myself, relax. The Lord is going to take care of you. New century version. Somebody needs to shout that. Relax. I said to myself, relax. The Lord is going to take care of you. Somebody say that. Say relax. I relax. The Lord. I, I used to say to myself, say, Albert, relax. The Lord is going to take care of you. Relax. Number two, realign. Realign. Some of you need to look at the people you have been working with and realign yourself. What is happening during this season? People are realigning. Forces are realigning. In America, Democrats are realigning. Conservatives are realigning. In Nigerian politics, somebody that contested as uh, APC four years ago, contested as PDP now, the one that was PDP four years ago, that can only happen in Nigeria. <laughs> Oh my God. But realign. Realign yourself. Realign yourself. Look at it. Who do I need to meet up to go up? Amos 7 5. Lord, I pray, show me by whom shall Jacob arise. See that is small. There are people by whom you should arise. Realign. Number three, reinvent. So that two, there are three things triumphant are doing. Number one, they relax. Number two, they realign. Number three, they reinvent themselves. So I want to talk to you now about reinventing yourself. I'm going to talk to you if you're walking in a secular place, you're working in an organization, then I'll talk to you if you're working in ministry, but I mean, let, let, let's go, let's go, let's go because of time, fresh oil for fresh start. You see, years ago, the CEO of Kodak was in a meeting with other CEOs and was telling them how they lost. They used to be one of the top most in Fortune 500. They were the apple of those days. He said, and we did everything like he told us to do it. We hired like we should hire. We fired like we should fire. We organized like we should organize. We structured like we should structure. But yet we lost. Then he started crying. He said, and the sad part is we don't even know what we did wrong. Hmm. It's true. They did everything to books, but yet they lost. They didn't do anything wrong, but the time moved. Time passed. But unfortunately, they didn't carry it. You knew what Kadak used to do? They used to do film and camera. Some of you, this butter generation, will know what I'm talking about. You buy a camera, you open the back, you put the Kodak film in. You have to be a specialist, though. That's the way you put it in. If you don't put it in like that, and it gets exposed at the end of it, so you put it in, you quickly cover the back of it so that there is no exposure. Then you take the picture, 24 or 36, until all the pictures are taken, you can get your your picture, see all the all the all the all the picture, the film is used. You can't get your picture. Then you now take the film to the dark room. That's a way to remove it. Light must not touch it. So it's dark room is really a dark room. You go to the dark room, then they remove it quickly, then they wash it in chemical like you're washing clothes, then they hang it to dry. You see? Some, some boys are laughing and saying, this man, that never happened before. Ask anybody my age. That's how we used to do our, our film and our camera. Then you hang it when it dry. Uh -huh. Then they now give you, then you now take it, your film is ready. When the world went digital, they didn't go digital. They lost. If you are not careful, you will lose because time changes. If you don't take this fresh oil for a fresh start, and learn these things I'm saying today, you will be like Kodak. You will wake up one day, there is nowhere for you to go. That is exactly what happened to the old nation of Switzerland. They used to be the best at making wristwatch. When we were young, one of the things your father must teach you is how to wind your wristwatch. When you start to wear wristwatch, I'm telling you, you wake up, before you talk to God, you wind your wristwatch first. What do you mean talk to God? You wind it. And you need to know how to wind it. If you wind it too much, you spoil it. <laughs> Oh my God. See, some people are looking at me strange. All these things I'm talking to you about is about 20 years ago. All these things I'm telling you about 20 years ago. You wake up, you whine, you whine, you whine. And when the world started moving away from whining, the problem is 
that at that time, some people started saying, no, Switzerland said we are not going to wine, you know, never. We won't do that. The world is going digital. We are not doing that. They lost out. If not for the stolen money they are keeping, they would have lost out totally. I'm trying to say to you, reinvent yourself this time. But thank God for Koda. They lost out then. But you know what? They came back to life last month. You know what they are producing now? Not film. They are producing the COVID-19 vaccine. American government gave them several hundred and $65 million, several $65 million for them to produce vaccine. They reinvented themselves immediately after that. Their share jumped up by 60%. 60%. Their share just jump up. Boom! Because they reinvent themselves. The world is changing. So Samuel said, Samsung said to themselves, what happened to Kodak must not happen to us. What will we do? So they gathered some hundred young men. They employed them. They called some of them thinkers. They called some of them futurists. They said, see now, think of the future for us. What will the future look like? Those guys came with a hundred things that were crazy. They said in the future, number one, people will want to build down, not build up. Do you get that? It won't be skyscrapers. It will be ground scrapers. I live in the house right now in Toronto, Canada, while I'm here, that has the car park is four ground, four levels on the ground, the car park. In fact, I went to Switzerland some years ago. I saw the FIFA headquarters. I said, is this all the FIFA headquarters? The guy that took me there laughed. He said, it is just two floors above the ground, but it is five floors underground. It has more floors under than it has above. The FIFA headquarters in Switzerland, in Zurich. Go and Google it. Go and find out. There are more floors down than up. So if you bomb the FIFA headquarters, only two buildings we go. Four, five is under. Seven floors altogether. Together. So when you enter into the lift, you will see two to go up, you see five to go down, most of it. I'm telling you sincerely, the world is changing. So the design now, that's what the future is said. They also said something very crazy. They said, well, we will now start to have movable house. That is to say, when I'm broke, I build my house in Nolomweru. Where money comes, I buy land in Alalibosa or buy land in Bodiga and tell some people, let me move my house there. And I thought that is far fetched until I visit in North Carolina, in a place called Montreal, in North Carolina, Montreal, I went to Billy Graham Library and Billy Graham House, and they showed me the house where he was born. I said, so he was born on this land. They said, no, we went to evacuate the house where he was born, and we moved it to Montreal in North Carolina, USA. So houses are being moved now, movable houses. They said the time is going to come that people will not want to have a tablet and have a phone, so they want a foldable tablet that when they close it it's a phone when they open it it's a tablet and last year this year samsung had already produced the first of those ones they said people you want shirts they don't need to iron i have a fear of that already shirts you don't need to iron the irons itself i have suits as i travel from nigeria to austria austria to switzerland i don't need to iron it i bring it from my bag i stretch it it's back as if it is iron the world is is changing and you need to change with the world. I remember a guy came to me sometime, a lady came to me years ago and said she needed money for school. I'd love to help people. So I said, okay, how much? She told me it wasn't even much. I wanted to give her the money. Then I asked her, which school? She said, Back Post Secretariat Institute. I said, what? She said, I said, what are you studying there? She said, type in and short hand. I just put my money back into my pocket. I said, type in and short hand. Your life is going to be short. Yeah? Your destiny will be short. You don't do that again. Who is using type in and short hand now when we can speak to our phone and our phone will type for us? Things are changing. Do you remember there was a time it was call centers. If you don't have a call center, you're a big boy. We used to go to Cyber Cafe and you pay by the hour. They give you the things, counting down. Before you check five mails, it is gone. Gone forever. No more Cyber Cafe, no more call centers, no more photographs. You see, when Kodak went down, everybody went down with it. Photographers that have dark room. Companies that produce the chemical. Things are changing and you need to wake up and change with it. I love to say to people, the future starts today. The future starts today. So I want to talk to you about things that we need to do, especially if you're watching me from Nigeria. Nigerian case is peculiar. Nigeria is the only nation now that 50% is under 25 in the whole world. 50% of our population is under 25. If you're going to be relevant in the next few years, whatever you are doing that does not attract 
25 below, you have lost it. I woke up one day, I did a survey in our church, and I discovered that we have a lot of people 25 above, we have a lot of people 10 below, but between 13 and 20, we didn't have enough. We had to start a teens church because the future of Nigeria is with those people, and you need to also move right now to what I call reverse parenting. Some of the things I'm saying to you now, you need to sit your son, your daughter down and let them teach you how the world works now on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, how to advertise, how to use those platforms. It's reverse parenting. My mom went to Ife when we were already in, in, in primary school, you know, so they give her assignment. She'll bring it home. She'll say, Femi, can you do this? I said, I can do it. He said, do it. He said, you didn't I explain how you did it. I thought she was trying to make me to know. I didn't know she was making me teach her. You need to do things like that now. It's a different world. I'm going to mention a dozen directions that you need to go with this fresh oil and fresh start. Dozen directions. Number one, media direction. No matter what you do, your business, your ministry, we need to go media now. There is no other way. Media is the future. Media is the way to go. I asked my daughter when she was in high school, she's second year in law now. When she was in high school, I said, go and bring your notebook. That's what my dad used to do to me. So I said, go and bring your notebook. And my daughter said, notebook for what? I said, your notebook is class. He said, it's on my it's on my tablet. I said, why? He said, that's why they told you to buy a tablet. They send my notes to it and we read it. I said, what of your own work assignment? So said, they send it to it. We do it on the tablet and we send it back to them. I said, yeah, this generation tracks can reach them. So you need to go the way of media. You can advertise on media. You can do everything on media. Go the way of media. Number two, physical building. That does not mean some people are telling nonsense, saying, well, you don't need to build a church. You don't need to rent a beautiful place and make your church beautiful because now everything is media. It's a lie. People will still come to church. People will still want to go to physical. They want to go to bars. Do you know right now, the greatest fight everywhere is that people want bars to open. They want clubhouses to open. They want shopping malls to open. Forget it. So if your building is beautiful, your building must be relevant. People don't need to ask questions to know where the toilet is. You must make it conducive and comfortable. So number one, the media direction. It doesn't direction. Number one, media. Number two, the physical building. Number three, impact people now they've gone online they've seen impact everywhere if you're a pastor during the lockdown they've listened to my pastor Reverend Victor they've listened to Reverend Sam they've listened to Craft Your Dollar they've listened uh, to, to, to the powerful and the powerful so you better up your game somebody say up your game no matter what you do now people can go online you are a tailor you you sew the clothes as if you're a carpenter people can go online now and see what people are wearing so you need to make impact number four the music dimension music is key now whatever you do as a church especially you need to give attention to music this is a generation driven by music that might be why even every anthem in every nation is musically inclined in fact you know what they've discovered they discover that people will buy more in your shop if you play music when they enter. Yes, yes, especially solemn, beautiful music. They discover that it makes people to buy more than they plan to buy. Music is key. No matter what you do, find out to inculcate music into whatever you do. Number five, pay attention to kids. Pay attention to kids. We have a generation now that we, the only reason why we do the things we do is because of our children. Several people relocated out of Nigeria because they want a better future for their kids. Several people move. My own parents move from Mokola to Ring Road because they don't want us to grow up with the wrong crowd in Mokola. Many people, the greatest of expenses in Nigeria is our children's education. You see, most of the companies, Mr. Biggs and Indomie and Co., the advertising is targeted to children. Children don't have money. They don't buy. But they know if children want it, we parents won't have an option. So in your church, I made that mistake years ago. I didn't give too much attention to my children's children. Church. A man had me preach in Manchester, made up his mind. If he ever comes back to Nigeria, he's coming to my church. And he come back to Nigeria, he relocated from Abuja to Ibadan because of us. He was looking for a church. The first two weeks, they didn't get us. Then he went to another church. But finally, he got us. When they came to our church, the third Sunday was excited. But the fourth Sunday, as they were driving, and he drove into our church, the children started crying. The man said, What? He said, We don't like this church. We prefer the other one. You know why they took care of them better than the other one? The man had to tell me, Sir, if not that I've made a vow, that if I came back to Nigeria, I'll be a member of your church, that would have been the last time. That 
woke me up. You need to give attention to children, whatever you do. That is why airports now have play area for children, Mr. Biggs. Have play area for children, tantalizers, play area for children. Number six, very, very important, the direction of why, 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 knowledge direction. We have a generation now that lives on why. You ask your child, go and eat your food, mommy, why? Go and sleep, mommy, why? Go read your books, mommy, why? So I taught my people, whatever you do, answer why so in my church when people come on the pulpit he said good morning my name is so 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 it's time to take offering because the bible says let's lift up our voice and pray we need to pray because the bible says don't wait for them to ask their thinking sometime ago the, the, so the young men all over nigeria started talking about titan titan should we pay tight we don't need to pay tight and they were expecting our fathers to address that you know what our fathers did they cursed them i don't believe it should curse them i came back home from a trip and i took just three two two tuesdays to teach on titan and our titan increased by 100 percent i'm not joking our own titan increased by 100 percent because i taught tight they are not rebellious they want to know why so before you do anything think of why before you ask people to lift up their hands why should they lift up their hands put that at the back of your mind so when you're doing things it's not like our generation our generation just do the things they tell us to do their generation is different right now my parents worship in my church so i pastor my parents my dad is 84 and i'm his pastor okay but when my dad says some things to me i say okay sir but when he says the same thing to my son my son is just a team my son will say grandpa why and now even me at my age, I'll be like, ah, you're asking my dad why? But that is this generation. They are thinking you need to give why. Number seven, the graphics direction. They are graphic driven. You've got to make sure whatever you're going to sell, the graphic is good. As a church, as a people, you graphics attract them. Pay attention to your graphics. Number eight, time management. This generation is time conscious. You know what? I do an online global service every monday 7 to 8 p.m nigerian time on facebook online and it's one hour in the one hour there'll be two sessions of prayer there'll be one session of confession one session of music how to teach then we'll take offering then i'll come back to close all that in one hour so people are used to one hour service in this lockdown you see the days of everlasting salmon is over don't do everlasting again people are tired they know how to do it now i do love clinic on facebook and instagram thousands of people every friday by 8 p.m talking about love is one hour even me have discovered how much you can pack into an hour so time is very important learn to manage your time number nine the meetings direction cut down meetings now there are meetings you can do on zoom there are meetings you can do on whatsapp video i am in toronto presently i do meetings with people all over the world online if you are a five of you in protocol you don't need to all drive to liberty road to have a protocol meeting you can do it whatsapp call you can do it in several ways then number 10 sports sports sport sport let's invest in sports is the future if you have your children let them give attention to sport is the future that's the direction we are going this post COVID number 11 mobile money direction when our church started using POS, people laughed, they complained. They said they, they've gone worldly. I didn't listen to them. What happened to me was one day after a power office service, I went upstairs and I saw the people in treasury, they are still counting money. And how much is the money? The 20 naira, the 50 naira, the 100 naira. And they will be in church three hours when everybody had gone. I said, this does not make sense. So I came to just start encouraging everybody, please send your money by transfer or write us a check. Or if you can't write us a check, then use POS. Then I went to GTB. They gave us a call, start three seven star three two star you can do it like that so i gave people several venues to pay the first thing that happened was that our income increased tremendously because people don't need to come to church to give any longer he helped us during the lockdown during the lockdown we didn't lack money because people had received several ways to to give without coming to church am 
Quit talking to somebody. No matter your business, find a way to have a mobile money direction. Then number 12, finally, the system di direction. Now, we are living in a day and a time now that everything needs to be structured and put system to it. For years, I've seen people come to complain to me. Reverend, you see that boy? I'm the one that raised him up. Oh, I picked him from little. I, I gave him money to school. Now he graduated. He works in a bank. He's no longer coming to our church. He said he's not comfortable. He's a bad boy. I used to feel like that too. Until I discovered this is the problem. Once you get used to an higher system, to go to a lower system becomes difficult. One of my mentors, the first time he went to America, and somebody gave him a suit. They Lord made suit in America, and he wore it. He was excited. So he came back home, he wore it the first Sunday. The second Sunday, he wore one of his former suits and started complaining. What did you people do to my suit when I was not home? My suit used to be better than this. Then the wife laughed. Nothing's wrong with your suit. Something's wrong with you. Your taste changed. So when somebody was in your church, no system, no nothing, it's okay. Then all of a sudden, he went to start working in an organized structure. And he saw systems. He saw structure. He saw things are done. He saw how things are laid out. He comes back to church. He's no longer feeling comfortable. He's not the devil pushing him. His system pushing him. His system. The same thing, you're a good tailor. But people don't even know. I mean, these are days in which people will see what they want and they tell you what they want. They cut it from the screen, from, from um, social media, send it to you. They want to know when they collect it. How do they pay? Yeah, you've not created any of those systems that is going to be a problem. That is a fresh oil. But the purpose of this fresh oil is fresh time. Did you get blessed? Did you enjoy all I've said? I know I've said so many things in such a short while. I'm sorry I don't have too much time. But I hope you will go back, listen to this message and look at these 12 dozen, a dozen directions that the world is going and know what to do with this fresh anointing for a fresh start. And I declare and declare that the hand of God is going to be upon you, that you will stand out, you will remain relevant, you won't lose your relevance in the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for people, maybe you have never given your life to Jesus, or you gave your life, but your life does not portray the lifestyle you want. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the privilege of being a Christian. You came, you died for us, that we might live for you. I pray for everybody that is on sinful voice. I want to receive you. I know that from now henceforth, your hand will come upon them. So repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You died for me. I will now live for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Once again, to my pastor, Reverend Victor, and his darling wife, Pastor Jimmy, to Pastor Femi Aladi Sami, and they all the pastors in Global Vest Church. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for receiving my ministry. I'm sure you'll be blessed. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Bye. Mm -hmm.